All right, my dudes, I hope you're all doing well today. So we're going to recap what we did in class with our Adobe Illustrator Bootcamp introduction. Diving back into the software, taking a look at what we've got so far. Um, we're gonna start at the very beginning and you guys can just skip through the video and then carry on wherever we ended in class. But for the sake of it, we'll do the whole thing from the scratch. So we know that we've got our toolbar here on the left, focusing mainly on our selection tool when interacting things. Recommend that we start learning the shortcuts for these as we go through the term, so V for that. Then we've got our properties panel on the right hand side of the screen, right now showing options to change the document itself. And as we sort of select assets and create assets, we'll have features over here to interact with them. Coming over to layers, we've got my layers here that I've made to demonstrate how layers work inside of Illustrator. So we've got our main layer and inside of that sits a bunch of sub layers inside of which can sit further sub layers ad nauseum until we've got everything that we need made. So when it comes to animating, we'll need to put each of these on their own main layers. That'll be an exercise we'll take a look at later in the term. Okay, so in our layers tab, we wanna come on down and just create a new layer for ourselves. So that's our create new layer button down here. Click on that and it will create layer 54 with an orange color label. I'm gonna relabel this. We're just going to double click on that and we're gonna call it radio. And that's where we're going to be making our radio. But before we do, let me not forget, we're going to be importing our reference footage. So with the unlocked layer selected, come on up to file and we're going to select place. And then we can select the image we downloaded from Canvas done by Sushama Patel. And we wanna to remember to turn on the template option for this one. We're actually gonna be importing two versions of this. So with that template option, we're gonna say place and we're going to see in our layers tab that we now have the template layer and uh, we can see that it is locked. So it's gonna unlock that so we can scale it up and get it where we want it. So we're gonna go over to properties with our layer now selected. You can see that it's dimmed out and that's because we set that as a template. We're going to just quickly center align this. So with the layer selected, come on over to the properties tab, select the horizontal align to center and vertical align to center. So the second and second last options there. We're gonna scale this up. So we're going to hold down our uh, shift while we click and drag in order to create a perfect um, scale. Otherwise it kind of just goes gooey on us. And if you hold down Option or Alt while holding down Shift, it scales from the center of the layer as opposed to in the direction that you're pulling your mouse. That makes placing assets a lot easier later down the line. So we'll just do that and it is now in place. We'll dive back into our layers here and we're just gonna lock that so we don't accidentally mess with it, select it or draw on top of it. Then we're going to just quickly create one more new layer I'm just changing uh, what we've done in class slightly just to make it easier for the color selector. So this new layer here, layer 56, we're just gonna call this ref and uh, we're going to go file place. We're gonna grab that same image there. We don't need to turn on template this time. And I actually just wanna place this over the layers that I made for you guys. The reason why we're doing that is as you might've noticed in class, when we use the eyedropper tool, it copies the exact properties across from the asset you have to um, the asset that you're clicking on to the asset that you have selected, and uh, I want to show you how to go about making things the long way, just so that you get a better grasp of that. So we're just going to use that ref there, and we're going to lock it. And now we have got something to work on top of, and something that we can use to select our colors. Okay, now let's build our radio. As we can see, we've got our initial shape here. So I'm just going to zoom in. If you're struggling to zoom in and out, Z is your shortcut for the zoom tool. Simply clicking or clicking and dragging might work as well. Um, otherwise, holding option and clicking will then zoom you out. But uh, I also know then that if you are struggling to sort of move around the screen, just remember that holding down spacebar will always activate the hand tool, allowing you to sort of shift your viewing panel around. Okay, so let's zoom in here and let's build our first shape. We can grab our rectangle tool. Let's head on over to properties and we're gonna leave the fill as white. We'll leave the stroke as black and we'll bring that stroke down to one. Okay, and simply, oops, not just click, click and drag. 
until we cover that blue face of the radio there. Okay, so when you release your shape, you'll see now that it is highlighted and we have these white dots on the inside of each corner. If you click and drag one of those dots, it will then round out the corners for the entire shape. So let's do that just to quickly bevel out and get the same kind of look that we have in our reference there. Okay, cool. Now we can go and grab our selection tool, shortcut for which is V. We're gonna head on over to layers and we're going to come to the radio layer. Let's toggle that down and we can see we have our first rectangle. I'm gonna turn the visibility for that off. Notice that I'm turning the visibility off for the sub layer, not for the main layer. If we turn off for the main layer, we won't be able to work on it. Okay, so for the sub layer, make sure that we have the radio main layer selected and we're gonna start blocking out the lines for this radio. So we're gonna grab our line segment tool that can be found underneath the shape tool here. Jump over to properties and let's turn the fill off. We're only working with lines. We don't need to worry about a fill right now. We're gonna have our stroke black. We'll leave that set to one and all we're going to do is click and drag out to create lines to demarcate these sort of different areas. We do however need to make sure that the lines that we draw overlap with the shape that we have. So just make sure that you overshoot the edges. In fact, to make it even simpler, we could just grab our rectangle and turn the fill off for now so we could just draw over it. Might, might as well do that. Okay, so we grab our line tool and what we're gonna do now is we're just going to click and drag holding down shift to create a straight line and uh, they can overshoot there like so. We need to make sure that the lines are at least touching and that guarantees that our next step will work when we use the shape, uh, shape maker tool to sort of cut these into their own squares. So we're just gonna do that. And we don't need to worry about these other lines. We'll get to those in a moment. Just use my arrow keys to quickly clean up where my placements are and we're good to go. All right, let's select our rectangle and let's put the fill back on so we can kind of see what's happening here. And we're gonna click and drag with our selection tool and once we release, it will select everything in that selection box that you draw. You can tell that it is selected because it is obviously highlighted. I also wanna point out here that you'll notice that while these assets are selected, we have these dots appearing to the right of the sub layers. That shows that they are selected. So unlike in After Effects, when we select a layer, it does not necessarily mean that you're selecting the asset. You actually need to click on it in your viewing panel. Otherwise I could have multiple selected assets, but only a couple of selected layers at any particular time. Okay, just a demonstration. Now let's turn these into their own shapes. With everything selected, we're going to grab our Shape Builder tool. Shortcut is Shift M. I'm gonna click on that, and you'll notice that we can now see all the lines that we've drawn out on screen. These little squares represent where they end. And as you hover over each of these areas, you'll notice that they get highlighted separately. If they're not being highlighted separately, it means that your lines weren't touching. So you might need to go back a couple of steps, just hit Command or Control Z and clean up those line placements. Okay, so you can see as I'm hovering over these areas, what we're gonna do is we're simply going to click in each and every single one of these. And what that does is it transforms these areas into their own shapes. V for my selection tool, and I can just click and drag to kind of show you that they've now been turned into their own boxes rather than uh, just a bunch of lines on screen. Now, during that process, the Shape Maker tool cut off any of the lines that were sticking outside of the rectangle. So we're just gonna go and clean those up by drag and selecting them and hitting the delete or backspace key. And that just gets rid of that excess information there. Okay, let's apply some color to this now. So we're gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see our reference image here. And we're going to select our top box and grab our eyedropper tool. It looks like a little piquette. And if you click on that, and hover over this blue section of our radio and click, it will automatically apply the color that we've clicked on to the asset that we have selected. Okay, V for my selection tool. I'm going to grab the left side box, holding down shift, I'm going to click and select the right side box. Now they're both selected. 
grab my eyedrop tool and click on the darker blue section here. And that applies the correct color there. I'm going to grab the top portion of the center console, holding down shift and clicking on the bottom portion as well. I'll hit I for the eyedropper tool and just select from my reference. It's a slightly different shade of gray than uh, the pure white that we had selected already. V for my selection tool, let's grab my center console. I for my eyedropper tool and we'll just select that nice light blue as well. And there we go. We have built the base for our radio. As you can see, we've got all of these colored um, paths in our radio sub layers. So we're going to turn the visibility off for those sub layers, just so we can see the speakers underneath. You can see that you can turn those off by simply clicking and dragging and uh, not turning off the main layer. Okay, just keeping the sub layers turned off. Make sure that the main layer is selected and let's zoom in here. We're going to make these circles next. So what we want is just to grab this nice shade of yellow that we have in the center of our speaker. So I'm going to hit I for the eyedropper tool. I don't have anything selected. So when I click, the only thing that's going to happen is that the color is going to be copied to my fill selection. Coming over to properties, as soon as I grab my shape tool, you'll see it set the fill there as well. Okay, so we want our ellipse tool selected. We're gonna be using this to make some circles. We want our fill set to the gold that we've just selected with the eyedropper tool and our stroke can be set to none. We're going to do that in a moment. So let's zoom in here and I'm gonna kind of eyeball where the center of the circle is and then hold down option or alt and shift and then click and drag to create a perfect circle scaling up from its center point. All right. Then we want this nice gold, sort of darker gold rim that we have going around. So I'm going to make sure that with my selection tool, I click off of my main shape. I'm going to grab my eyedrop tool and I'm going to click on that color on the rim there. And we'll see that it applies the color to the fill. Now here's a little trick I didn't get to show you in class, but if you click on this little swap fill and stroke, that will automatically then apply the stroke information there to something to point out. We're going to double click and we're going to get this uh, hex code over here so that we can copy it across. So the hex code sits next to the hashtag here. It's a collection of letters and numbers and it represents each and every single individual um, color, tint, shade or hue of the millions upon millions of colors that Adobe software can produce. So we're going to make sure that that is selected and hit Command or Control C to copy it. You can say cancel or OK. It's all good. V for my selection tool. Let's grab my circle and I'm going to double click on the stroke box again and hit Command V or Command uh, Control V to paste that information. And we have now applied a stroke of that color. Now we want to increase the size of that stroke, but as we can see, it's getting bigger sort of or smaller incrementally on either side of the path of our shape. And we only want this one building outwards. So to do that, we're going to click on the word stroke. That's a button. And that opens up our stroke panel options. Ignoring these two options for now, we're going to come down to align stroke and we're going to select the third portion there, align stroke to outside. And that's going to allow us to create a stroke that pushes away from the path of the shape. We'll leave that stroke at 15 points. All right, so now we've got our first sort of uh, base for the speaker. Let's move that out the way and uh, let us deselect that shape by just clicking off of it. I'm gonna grab I for the eyedrop tool and I'm gonna grab that shade of red that we have there. Then I'll grab the, ed uh, the, uh, the eclipse tool. Sorry guys, I'm tripping over my words today. Um, the eclipse tool over here and we're gonna do the same thing we just did, holding down option or alt and shift, click and drag out to create a perfect red circle. We can just position it like so. All right, so we've got the portions that we need. Now we just want to apply this nice drop shadow effect that we have going on here. And that's going to allow us to increase the illusion of three dimensional space. So grabbing our red circle, we're going to come on up to effect and we're going to come down to stylize, which is under the illustrator effects portion of this panel. Under stylize, we're then going to select drop shadow. 
Now, Drop Shadow sort of remembers the settings that you've used, so this is kind of from a previous class here. But what we can do is we're gonna type in a couple of values. Make sure that your opacity reads 100%. We can bring our X offset down to four points. Our Y offset will be zero and our blur will be zero. So as you can see, X offset changes the left and right position and Y offset changes up and down position of that. So we're just gonna have zero for Y, four for X and zero for blur. We can say okay. All right, so now we've applied our first effect. This effect can be edited from the properties panel. So you can see here now under stroke and opacity, it also says drop shadow. Clicking on that will reopen the shadow window that I can then make adjustments to. We'll leave that at four and we say okay. If I wanted to get rid of it, I could then just click on the trash can icon to the right of the name of the effect and that will delete it. Command or control Z to undo that. All right, so we wanna do the same thing for our large yellow base here. So we're gonna come on up to effect with our large circle selected, effect, stylize, drop shadow. It remembers the settings. We're just gonna increase the X offset by one point. So that's gonna go up to five. We'll say okay. We're just gonna click and drag to place it back in the center. And I always hold down shift while clicking and dragging because that just sort of constrains it to a perfect horizontal movement. It helps with keeping alignment. Okay, so we've built our first sort of speaker. Now we need to obviously do the second one. This took a little bit of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to be lazy about it. Lazy is fine as long as it's efficient. So I'm going to drag and select both of my circles and I am then going to hold down option or alt on my keyboard. As I do that, you'll notice that the indicators for your mouse icon changes. If I click and drag, it makes a perfect duplicate. I can hold down shift and it even constrains that duplicate to a perfectly horizontal path. Just drag it across and then release the mouse button before releasing the keys in order to create a perfect copy of that information. You'll see that they get placed on their own layers if we dive over to the, property, uh, the layers tab. Okay, back to properties. Now we're gonna use the same technique to just quickly populate these circles that we have going on here. So I'm gonna grab this red circle here and I'm gonna hold down Option or Alt, click and drag, and we'll make a duplicate for that white button. Let's scale it down to about the right size. And then we can click on its Fill option and just set that to white. Hold down Option or Alt, click and drag to make a copy. Hold down Option or Alt, click and drag, and we do it again. Just use my arrow keys to shift those up a little bit. We're gonna do the same for the blue dial as well. So let's just quickly grab any one of these white ones, drag and drop. We'll just scale it roughly. And with it selected, I'm going to hit I for the eyedrop tool and click on the dark blue knob there to get that shade of blue. And then holding option or alt, click and drag to make our final copy just for the sake of symmetry. Okay, so we've now got all the dials that we need for our radio. Coming on over to our layers, if we turn back on our sub layers, we can see it's coming together quite nicely. So now we just need to do a couple of decals and the gold bar in the center. So let's get going to those. I'll just turn off everything just so that it's out the way. Okay, so with the main layer, uh, our radio selected, we're gonna come back over to properties and we're going to uh, we're actually just gonna quickly go and grab the right shade of gold first. So I'm gonna hit I for the eyedrop tool, click on this sort of center portion of gold, and I'm gonna show you how to create this base and then these overlays of light and shadow. So with that done, we're then going to grab our rectangle tool and we'll just click and drag to create a gold base like so. We can round out those corners in line with the reference. Okay, V for my selection tool, and we can then just reselect this shape. Now, in order to create these light and shadow falloffs, we need to have three copies of this base. So I'm just gonna hold down Option or Alt and make one, two, three. We'll leave this one here because we're gonna be placing everything on top of that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to just grab the first two copies that we've got here. Let's give them a black stroke for now of one. That's fine, just so we can see what's happening. And I'm going to place the first copy 
or sorry, the second copy over the first like so. So it just sits on top of it and leaves a portion sticking out. And that's looking fine. And then I'm gonna click and drag to select both of my assets. Now I found later in the week that Pathfinder can also be found in our pro uh, properties tab when we have two pieces of information selected that are overlapping. So these are options that allow us to essentially delete overlapping information or interact with overlapping information in order to make more complex shapes. Just to run through the examples, the very first one is called Unite. Clicking on that will combine the two layers that you have selected into one, creating a complex portion there. Command or Control Z to undo that. We want the second option, which is click to minus front, and that's going to delete the top layer as well as the overlapping information below it, like that. Okay, let us give it a black fill. Let's turn the stroke off, and let us then hit the direct selection tool. So the direct selection tool here is the white arrowhead, shortcut for which is A, and this allows me to interact with individual pieces of information on our layer. So each of these little squares that we see over here are essentially vertexes, they're kind of corner points that the um, layer is made out of. And if we select one of these here in the center, or sorry, on the right hand side center there, you'll see that either one of these with them selected you have access to this little white dot that we're going to click and drag out to uh, create a nice swish there. Okay, back to our normal selection tool and let's click and drag this shape down back on top of the gold bar. All right, we'll leave that there for now. Let's come back up to our third copy and what we're going to do is grab our shape builder tool. We're going to set the fill to white and we're going to draw a large rectangle just vertically down like that. And that's going to then be the base for our light sheen. With my shape now built, I'm now going to hover over one of the corners of the shape. We'll see that we get a little icon showing that we can click and drag to rotate. And I'm just going to set that at a rakish angle like so. And grab my selection tool and select both of those layers. Okay, so we've seen that the Pathfinder option for Unite turns them into the same shape. Minus front obviously deletes the overlapping information. The third option is intersect. And what that does is deletes everything that is not overlapping. And that just allows us to quickly make this shape as well. You can click and drag that down and place it back on top of the gold bar. All right, now let's set up the color variation. So we're not gonna be changing the color of this asset here. What we're gonna do is play with its blend mode. So we're going to come on over to Opacity, just below Stroke. You can see it's also highlighted and slightly bold. Clicking on that opens up our blend options. We're going to select this panel that says Normal, and we're going to then change that to Overlay. And you'll see that that then changes the way the information is being seen. It's still black, it still has a black fill. Everything that I drag it over gets darkened that, is now you, uh, that you see through it, essentially. Okay, and we'll drop the opacity down to about 75%, so it's not so intense. We're gonna do the same thing with this white bar. So we're going to have that selected. Click on opacity, select normal, and change that to overlay. And we're gonna drop the opacity of this white strip down to 50%. And there we go. Going back to our reference, we can see that there's a little strip of light there as well. So let's just quickly create that. So we're going to come down here and what we're going to do is grab our line segment tool, turn the fill off and we'll turn the stroke to white. Let's increase it to about five points. And uh, oops, misclick there. What we're going to do is just drag a vertical line like so. Okay, now we're going to change the cap of that line because right now it's very harsh corners. It kind of clashes with the vibe we've got going on here. So we're going to come on over to the word stroke, click on that, and we're going to change the cap from butt cap to round cap. And that just rounds that out nicely there. Click away, click on the word opacity, change normal to overlay, and bring the opacity down to 50%. And we now have our 
gold sheen. Alright, so that's looking pretty cool. Now I want to introduce quickly the grouping of layers. So if we take a look at what we've got so far in our radio, we've got a bunch of paths and rectangles as well as the ellipses for our knobs. Now, these assets are fairly simple to move if I wanted to, but this one would constantly need to be drag selected in order to, order to make sure I didn't accidentally leave the shadow and highlights behind. So we're going to group these onto their own sub layer. So we're going to drag and select all of our assets uh, just for this gold bar. Right click and we're going to select group. What that does is it places those elements into their own sub layer called group and you can interact with that as a single layer. So I never need to worry about leaving behind the elements. They'll always move accordingly. Okay, so our radio is coming together quite nicely. What we need to do now is just finish up the antenna and then we need to add our CD tray, a couple of line decals and then some drop shadows to really round it out. So let's turn everything off again and let's build up our antenna next. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up and hit I for the eyedrop tool, grab that shade of blue, and then I am going to grab my ellipse tool and dra dragging from the center, holding down option or alt and shift, creating the base of that antenna there. I'm going to V for my selection tool, hold down option or alt, click and drag to make a copy, and then holding down Alt and uh, Shift, clicking and dragging to scale it down as well. Okay, let's grab our line segment tool next for the actual antenna part. Jump back to properties and turn our fill off and our stroke to black. I think we can up that to about two points there. And I'm just going to click and drag while holding down Shift to create a straight line. Okay. So now our layers are kind of uh, a little out of order here. We want this to be able to disappear behind our radio if I turn everything back on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab this recent line and the two dark blue circles. And we're going to click and drag those layers down the bottom of the layer stack. And we're going to grab the line layer and we're going to do the same. Click and drag and just drop it at the bottom of the layer stack. And that way it looks as though it is correctly sort of in space. Okay, let's do the CD train next. Coming down, let's quickly turn off everything again for the last time. We can see what we're working with. Grab the radio layer and grab our line segment tool. Okay, so we're going to zoom in and we're just going to drag out a line for this here, roughly like that. Increase the thickness of that to maybe about 10 and we want to change that cap again. So we're just going to, with our line selector, click on stroke and select round cap. And that's going to allow us to make that adjustment there. V for our selection tool, just off, uh, click off of that line there because we need to change our settings again. We're going to grab the line segment tool and we're going to click on the word stroke and just change that back to butt cap. And we're going to bring our line thickness down to two points. Let's click and drag to create the first one. And then rather than drawing each of them, I'm just going to hold down option or alt, click and drag, and that creates my duplicates. Those magenta lines that you're seeing pop up are the um, sort of automatic guides that are built into Illustrator. Quite handy as well. I uh, don't need that last one. Okay. So we've got all of our lines. Let's come back to our layers and turn everything on and see what it looks like so far. Nice, it's coming together great. Okay, so taking a look at our reference, we can see that there is a sort of very deep drop shadow effect back there, as well as one being applied here. And then we also have this swooshing sort of shadow falling across our screen. So we're gonna try our best to recreate those next. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to come over to our layers and we're going to make sure that the top bar here, our layer we can see is selected by this dot, is sitting above all of the other blue boxes. And that's just so that the drop shadow that we make can be made visible. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. 
and what we're going to do is type in the following values an opacity of 50 percent an x offset of zero and a y offset of three blur offset is going to be set to one and that gives us our sort of drop shadow falling across onto the bottom portion there we can say okay and we're going to grab our three sort of uh, panels over here so our top white middle blue and bottom white let's make sure i've got them selected this one's proving a bit difficult to get a hold of there we go that's just disappearing underneath the panel so we just make sure that those are sitting on top of the blue boxes to either side of them as well in the layer panel and we're going to go to effect stylize and drop shadow except now we're going to change our y offset to zero and our x offset to one okay so that's just going to leave a little drop shadow for them from that center console as well and we'll say okay all right next what we're going to do is we're going to create a big black drop shadow here to finalize that effect now, I ran into an issue where I, when I tried to add a second drop shadow effect to my layer, it kind of broke a little bit. We'll see if that was just a fluke or not. Um, I know it's not generally recommended, but it does seem to unfortunately not want to behave when it comes to creating the drop. It's still visible below there. And that's because it's applying a drop shadow onto the other drop shadow, which is uh, kind of what's causing it to break there. So that's what the problem is, I think. So rather than doing a second drop shadow effect on that, we're just going to grab our big blue box here and I'm going to double click on it. When you double click on something in Illustrator, it generates or turns it into a, um, or takes you to isolation mode, sorry, shall I say. And in isolation mode, I can't interact with anything else except for the item that I sort of double clicked on. And what we're gonna do is I'm just going to scale this up and then I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool shortcut for which is A, and I'm gonna click on this top right corner here and just round it out to match what I have in the reference. And that way we just need to apply one big drop shadow effect to this box and we'll get that same effect. So I'm just gonna double click off of that. You'll see we can't see the fact that it extends all the way up because of where it sits on our layer stack. So we're gonna come up to effect, stylize, drop shadow, Let's increase the opacity to 100. Let's take the blur down to zero and let's increase the um, X offset to about 25 points. We'll say OK. And that's our radio pretty much done. We'll do that sweeping shadow at the end. That's kind of going to sit on top of the main layer. Then move on to doing the pot plants. We'll come back and do the sort of swooping motion of the shadow a little bit later. So I'm just going to turn off the visibility for my radio layer and lock it for now. And let's come on over to the pot plant on the left here. We'll need to make a new layer. That's called layer 57. And I'm going to double click and just call this plant left. Okay. And inside plant left, what we're going to do is let's first make this pot. And then we're going to come up and make these leaf fronds over here. So let's get the correct shade of red. I'm just gonna hit the I key for eyedropper and select my red. And then I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. This one's nice, simple, it's just a box. So we're just gonna drag that out there. Hit V for our selection tool and we can move that out the way. Next up, we wanna do these white stripes. So let's grab our line segment tool. Just come over to properties and turn the fill off. And then we'll turn our stroke on to white and increase that to about six points. And click and drag to create my first line. Rather than redrawing each and every single one of them, I'm just gonna hold down Option or Alt and click and drag to make copies. And I can make selections of multiple numbers of these and make copies of those to speed up that process. Like so. Okay. We're going to grab our red box and move it back underneath those white stripes and we've got our pot let's group this as well the same thing that we did to our gold bar and that way we can always work with this pot a little bit easier so i'm going to click and drag to select all of my assets there 
right click and say group. That then means that on layers, inside my main layer is now a sub layer called group, inside of which are all the assets for that part. Cool. Let's lock that subgroup so I don't accidentally add anything more to it. And then we're going to take a look at using our pen tool to make these shapes here. So I'm going to come on up and use the eyedropper tool just to get the correct shade of yellow. And I'm going to click on the swap, fill and stroke button to apply it to a stroke rather than to the fill. And we're going to grab our pen tool, P for pen. The pen tool is absolutely fantastic, by far my favorite tool in the software. So with this tool, we're going to click to create our very first point. You'll notice then that you get a line indicator showing what the path is going to look like when you click again. I could simply click to create another straight line or I can click and drag to introduce curvature handles that allow me to introduce a curve to this path. And I'm just going to draw a line down the center of one of these leaf fronds here. I can hit P to reset the pen. Now it's not trying to continue to draw the line, it's allowing me to draw a new one. And we're just going to make a couple of lines going down these leaf stems, like so. We're going to adjust their thickness in stroke in a moment. Okay, so once we've got all of our lines, we can start introducing some thickness to them. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and let's start with this stalk here. With my path selected, I'm going to grab my width tool, shortcut for which is Shift W. And with the width tool, we can actually click and drag on paths that have been created and we can introduce our own thickness to them, like so. Now, if you click and drag normally, it's simply going to increase or decrease the thickness equally on either side. But if you hold down Option or Alt while clicking and dragging on one side, it will apply to one side and not the other. So it gives you even more control there. I have a little bit more there. Okay, so let's practice doing that by applying thickness to these strokes. Remember that you can, in fact, use the um, isolation mode that I introduced to you guys a little bit earlier to help with this as well. Simply have your selection tool selected, double click on an asset to enter isolation mode, and that makes it a little bit easier to work with without accidentally clicking on other things. With your selection tool, double click anywhere else to exit isolation mode. Okay, and that's that. Let's quickly correct some colors. So with everything deselected, I'm going to hit I for the eyedrop tool, click on that darker shade of yellow, and then allow that to swap over there. I just want to double click on it and get the hex code actually. So Command or Control C to copy it. And we're then going to, I guess I've just made this a little bit harder than it needs to be. I suppose we could just have selected them use the eyedropper tool and clicked over there to get the color. Ah, but I see it's broken the paths, so we're not gonna do that. Sorry, so we'll go through that again. Grab that dark yellow. Let's double click to grab our hex code and copy that. And then we're going to select these leaves here and we'll just double click on their stroke color and paste the hex code we just copied there for those darker shades. Okay. So these dark ones obviously need to sit at the bottom of the layer stack. So I can hold down Command or Control and select multiple layers here. I'm gonna drag those to the very bottom below the pot. And then we're gonna take the rest of our layers and we're gonna drag those to rest between the pot and those darker leaves. Just so we get the correct layer order there. Okay, and that's our pot plant done. Let's unlock the group layer collapse the main layer and lock that. We can come on over and do the other part. So we need to make a new layer there. Let's call that plant right. And let's start off by making our pot. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. In fact, just grab my eyedropper tool so I can get the correct color first. Then the rectangle tool. 
and we're gonna come down and just drag out the box like so. And we'll round those corners as we see in the reference. That might be a little bit smaller maybe. Something like that. Okay. I'm then just gonna move this over to the side so I can see what I'm doing next. I want a white box next. So we're gonna grab our Shape Builder tool. Let's go over to Properties and change the fill to white. And we can just draw out a white strip going across it like that. And we'll just drop its opacity to 50%. Maybe 60. Yeah. Okay, and there's our pot. Let's click and drag to select both of the layers and we're going to right click and say group. And that way our pot is now on a single layer. We can just place that there. We'll come over to our layers. Let's lock that sub layer so we don't accidentally add to it. And then we'll have our main layer selected. Okay, let's do these shapes next. Grab I for my eyedropper tool to select the color for these leaves here. And then we're gonna grab the pen tool, shortcut for which is P. And we're gonna click to create our first point and then click and drag to introduce a curve to, and uh, start building this leaf. Now, in order to prevent the pen from continuing to try and draw that line, I'm going to re-click on the point that I just made. That retains the curve that was made, but it stops trying to predict where the curve's gonna go from there. Then we just need to click on our first point to close that shape. If you don't get these sort of curvature points right the first time round, don't stress. You simply need to grab your direct selection tool and that lets you work with the handles individually. So you can reposition those and reattempt the curves as many times as you need. All right, P for pen. Let's do the next leaf over here, something like that. P for pen to reset, and we can kind of just guess what that would look like there. Maybe something like that. Okay, not too happy with that. I might just adjust it slightly like so. There we go. V for our selection tool. Let's grab these leaves and just move them out the way. And we're gonna hit P for pen, jump on over to properties and change the fill to nothing and we'll add a black stroke, two points of thickness. Oops, I should have deselected my shapes before I started doing that. So sorry, deselect our shapes, then grab our pen tool, turn the fill off and uh, add a black stroke. Turn that stroke up to two points and let's click on stroke and make sure that round cap is selected. I'm gonna draw these twigs over here. So I'll just have those out there. Yeah, and hopefully you'll be a little bit more precise than I am. Let's just adjust that slightly. Okay, and we can now move these leaves back across to sit underneath those lines. Now for the sake of um, our exercise later, let's also group these leaves because we're gonna kind of want to want, um, animate these on their own layers later. So rather than just having a mess of lines and paths, Let's just select our leaves. So if I can just zoom in here and grab these. So that's uh, these paths and that leaf. Right click and group. And that's just gonna give me a group of flowers that I can work with later. So each grouped into their own sub layer. And that will make animating them a lot easier later down the line. Okay, let's move those flower groups below the pot. We can unlock the sub layer and we've now completed that. Okay, the last thing that we need to do now is just to apply these kind of um, overlay shadows that we see on our shapes here. So if I turn off my layers, you can see there's one across the red part, the radio, as well as here on the blue part. So let's draw these out quickly. Let's come back to the radio and uh, let's unlock the main layer. And we're just gonna draw another rectangle this time around. So we'll grab our rectangle layer and uh, we'll turn our fill off turn our stroke to black and we need to turn the visibility on I suppose there okay 
Let's actually lock all of our sub layers so we don't accidentally mess with those. And then with our rectangle layer, we're just gonna click and drag and draw a sort of duplicate over our front face here. And I can uh, just scale that accordingly. And it's okay if we uh, don't round those corners out, we can leave them sharp for now. Well, actually, yeah, let's just round them out so it's an exact copy. Okay, so what I'm going to do with the shape now is we're going to just give it a fill so I can get a better idea of what we're doing with it. So let's give that a black fill and let's turn the stroke off. And I'm going to select the uh, direct selection tool, so that's A, and drag and select these top two corner pieces here. And I'm just going to delete those for now. So that's kind of getting rid of that section there. Um, so this is now an, un, an, an unclosed shape. So we've gotten rid of pieces of information. So now we're going to grab our pen tool. We can click on this point over here. I'm going to click to sort of add a point here in the center. And then I'm going to click to close the shape there. And what this is going to allow me to do is with my direct selection tool, I can now select the center point that I just made. And we're going to kind of just drag that down here. And I still have access to that rounding tool. So I can just drag that out and get that shadow going there. All right. So with my selection tool, let's have that shape selected. We're going to click on the word opacity. We're going to change that to overlay. Uh, in fact, maybe we change that to multiply. And uh, we just bring the opacity down to about 45%. Uh, still a bit dark, maybe we make it 30%. Okay, and there we've got our sort of shadow falling across it. Definitely still a little bit too dark. Let's bring it down to 15% and then we should be good. Yeah. Okay, and that's our shadow layer. So we can unlock all of our sub layers now. We don't have to worry about selecting them by mistake. And let's collapse the radio and lock that. Next up, we're gonna do our plant. So what we're gonna do for our plant is let us unlock the main layer and we're going to grab our rectangle tool and we're gonna just draw out another duplicate of that square to sit on top of it. I'm gonna hit A for my direct selection tool and we're gonna to grab that top left corner piece there and we're just gonna drag it down and drop it like so and we can then drag out the corner to round it out. With that shape selected under properties, we're gonna click on opacity, change it from normal to multiply, and we'll then change that opacity down to 15%. Alrighty, and then last up our blue part, so let's turn that back on there. And we're going to grab our rectangle tool, draw out a square. Oops, make sure that I have the correct layer selected first, obviously. Draw out my square. Hit A for the direct selection tool. Um, just want to see which direction that shadow is falling in that direction. So we're going to grab the top right corner and just drag that down here. And round that out like so. You can kind of see that it extends a little bit further up, but that's fine. You can always raise that up slightly just by grabbing one of these points here. Bring that back down. So this gives us complete manipulation there. And uh, this is sitting behind the radio, but we can just drag these points down so that it ends there. And we're pretty good. Mess with those handles. And then under properties, we'll change the opacity from normal to multiply and change that down to 15%. All right, and then we just need to change the layer stack position. So our blue pot plant needs to sit below the radio. And I believe our red pot plant sits on top. Yeah, sorted. And that's how we do it, folks. So I apologize for the stumbles along the way. Uh, I've definitely been having one of those brain fart days. But hopefully you found this interesting, entertaining maybe, and hopefully at least insightful. 
So that's all we need to do to get you guys up to date for our first week tutorial. We'll be diving into our character in next week's one. So I'll catch you guys then. Ciao.